Okay, today we are going to jump into the sacred strength of harmony. <laughs> this is going to be a ride. Okay, let's let's um, let's talk about this a little bit. Harmony is a, a a very misunderstood strength, and uh, when when especially men, when men get this strength, when they they do their full 34 report and they find out they've got harmony high typically they're disappointed <laughs> to say the least and i was no exception i actually have harmony as my number four strength and it is my top relationship building strength so um and and i was rather uh disappointed to say the least before i understood this strength when i saw that because I just didn't think it was a very manly strength. <laughs> I didn't think it was something that that I should. This is something that a, a a little old church lady should have. I shouldn't have this. I should be, you know, I, I'm shooting all over myself, you know. Um, <laughs> so I should be this. I should be that. I should not be harmony. I should not have that in my top strengths. Um, Incidentally, uh, for Kim, it happens to be her number 30, so it is way down low for Kim. And um, <clears throat> whenever there is a situation that arises that, that requires harmony, typically she excuses herself from that and says, Ron, you're in charge of this part. You, we need your harmony right now. Um, and uh, th that's the way that goes, and, and it works really well. Kim has the uh, she, you know, she has the awareness to be able to say, you know what, there's someone that can handle this situation better than me in a more harmonious way. And she's very aware of when something, a situation requires harmony. Um, but, uh, but again, she knows that uh, she's not the person to deliver that harmony. So let's talk a little bit about some of these misconceptions about harmony and why i and a lot of men had have a negative attitude towards that and by the way i don't have a negative attitude towards it anymore because i understand it better and it's in ways in certain ways it's almost the opposite of what i thought this strength was okay so first of all as you think of harmony you may think of well this is just this is a a strength of kindness and acceptance and uh, tolerance. <laughs> These kind of words come out. Guess what? It is the exact opposite of that. Harmony has, has very little to do with acceptance and tolerance. And I'm going to explain that here, here in just a minute. Um, but, but that's why, you know, that, that acceptance and that tolerance just... Uh, 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 doesn't sound like a person of strong conviction or a person that knows the direction they're going in and, and the things they want to accomplish. And me being an extreme executor, having mostly executing strengths, I mean, harmony, how is this going to help me? So anyway, it, it's, it's really the opposite of those things. In fact, harmony is one of the most unaccepting <laughs> And one of the, the most intolerant of the strengths, except maybe belief is more that way, the belief sacred strength is even more so. But harmony runs a close second. So, and again, I can say this, I can get away with it because it's my number four and it is my top relationship strength. So, uh, let, let's talk about what's good about harmony. All right, let's start there. Um, harmony is, is, very, uh, is very effective in helping people reach some level of, of common ground, some level of agreement. So if there's a, if there's a conflict uh, between the person with high harmony and another person, they're going to approach that argument uh, or that, that, you know, that conflict they're going to approach it by saying, well, well, let's let's back this down a little bit and let's find where we do agree and then we can build from there. So, you know, we all can agree on this. We, you know, we both can agree on this. And they'll look for that common ground and that's very effective. So that's a very good quality. And, th and that is um, one of the things that, that harmony people do very well. 
Um, I that's that's exactly what I do. Before I even studied the strengths, I knew that that's kind of uh, before I got you know trained as a coach. I, I knew that's what I how I used my harmony by finding common ground. That that's what I did. So harmony. Uh, sometimes people confuse harmony with empathy, and empathy is not really that judgmental or that uh, um, you, know, you know intolerant. Um, but but harmony is and uh so and and when we talk about empathy we think of uh being able to feel what another person feels you know being able to feel that inside us we can we can look at that person and we just know what they're feeling um harmony is not about knowing what that person feels or what that person is experiencing it's more about the relationship between two people. Maybe the person uh, that has high harmony or maybe he's seeing a relationship dynamic in two other people and how they're in interacting with one another. So it, it's more about the relationship, not about the individual. They're, the harmony person is actually feeling the relationship, if that makes sense. So um, again, that can be very valuable. That can there's There's some great insight there. Um, there's some, some great ability there to help people, um, you know, come to, again, an area of, of common ground. And, uh, again, I, I think that's what's so wonderful about this strength. Um, let's, let's talk about where this strength goes a little bit haywire, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, when, when harmony goes kind of haywire... Um, what's happening is see harmony people, people with high harmony really, um, have strong expectations of the way things are supposed to be. Um, if I'm working with a person, I expect that person to work with me in a harmonious way. I expect them to listen and I will listen to them and we're going to go from A to B to C and we're going to follow this process and everything's going to be peachy keen and we're going to finish our work and then we're going to be ready for the next thing. That's harmony. It's, it's kind of that flow that everything is moving along as it's supposed to be. High harmony, I, I would imagine that, that um, you know, um, Henry Ford probably had high harmony by creating the assembly line. You know, this, this this, uh, you know, chassis comes to here, this person puts a wheel on, the next person puts a steering wheel on, this person installs the seats, going down the line, and the whole thing just flows. It flows, and at the end of the line, you've got a completed uh, Model T or a Model A Ford car. And um, so what happens then when this, the assembly line breaks down? What happens if something, you know, a, a gear breaks, a, a machine breaks, or a person breaks. Um, this is where the high harmony pe person can get very judgmental and can, can say, you know what, that's not the way this is supposed to be. This, this system is supposed to be working this way, and this is causing this to fail. This is causing this whether it's this person or this machine or this policy or whatever it is, they don't have any tolerance for that policy or that machine, anything that's interrupting the flow. They do not accept that. They have no tolerance for that. So you can see how uh, harmony is not about that acceptance level at all, what you may think of. You know, high harmony, oh, we're just getting along. Well, they get along until they don't. And so that's what you have to understand about high harmony. Harmony is very is a very demanding strength. It's a very um, you know judgmental strength, quite frankly. So um, <laughs> I talked to you a little bit about how this strength can go bad when something breaks, when something doesn't meet the expectations of the person with high harmony and interrupts that flow that's when the high harmony person uh, can get out of sorts. That's when they can start reacting poorly. <laughs> and I can say that because I've done it. Um, this is where that, that stress level builds up, that 
um, that, that sense of conflict inside that a high harmony person does not want. They don't want, a lot of people are okay with conflict. Hey, you don't get along with me, that's fine. Hey, you don't like this policy, that's fine. It's not there for you to like, it's there for you to follow, blah, blah, blah. High harmony people aren't like that. They want everybody to like it. They're, they're that judgmental. They want everybody to like what they like. And, and that's really what it comes down to. I'm, I'm high harmony, I'm reasonable, I like these things, therefore you should like these things too. And, and that is where harmony gets into the super judgy area. So what happens when two people, ha uh, a person with high harmony and another person, whether they have high harmony or not, uh, but that person with high harmony gets in an argument with another person. They want to resolve that argument as quickly as possible. They want to resolve that conflict as quickly as possible. That is important because they cannot function if that, that, um, if that conflict does not get resolved. They, they, can't really, um, they can't really separate from that very well. And so if, if you are a person of high harmony or maybe your, uh, your significant other is a person of high harmony, let's go that route for a minute. So you don't have high harmony, but maybe you, the other person that, you're, that is significant to you has high harmony. You would be do, doing them a, a great justice by helping to resolve the conflict quickly because the longer they're in conflict, the more they're going to fall out of their strengths, the more they're going to fall into their shadow strengths or start using their, their sacred strengths in a very sinister way. So you, you need to understand this. This is a very important point. Um, harmony people just can't deal with the conflict. And if they feel they can't resolve it, then either a bunch of ener negative energy is going to come out or it's going to come in and, or it's going to be both. And, and that can be very destructive. So as we're going forward, it, I, I think the, the most important thing when, you're, when you know somebody has high harmony uh, to support them in that, I think it's very important that if there is a conflict, um, approach it in a caring way and in a, in a way of, of trying to get it resolved quickly. Not that you need to cater to them. You don't. You can point out to them that, hey, you're being kind of judgy here. You're expecting me to value what you're valuing, and I don't value that the way you do. And there's nothing wrong with you doing that, right? Because those of us that do have high harmony, what we need to remember when there's a conflict is we are not the measuring stick. Okay, we, our emotions, our thoughts, our, um, you know, experience, wh whatever it is, our opinions, our, our, our core values are not the measuring stick for the rest of the world. And we oftentimes think, think that they are. That it's, it is, harmony is that judgmental. So we have to make sure we don't go that far. Um, it's very important that we also... Um, re remind ourselves that, that conflict isn't always a bad thing. Conflict is not necessarily something that has to be shut down or squashed or avoided. Uh, sometimes conflict is, in, if, in, in fact, a growth process. So that kind of gives you a little perspective on uh, if you do have high harmony, the things you need to look out for, and if you're uh, live with somebody or your significant other or you work with somebody else who has high harmony and you don't, uh, things that you could do to kind of help that, you know, you know help uh, keep things moving in a healthy way. So um, I think that's about it for now. I think I've covered harmony fairly well. I, I could probably spend a lot more time on this, but I, I think I've covered enough on this. So Anyway, let me know if you have any comments or questions. You can always post them here at the bottom of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, remember, inspiration starts here.